Well, I guess before the video starts, I'll just mess with my dog a bit. Oops, oopsie doopsie. Yeah, that's it. Rex? Rex? Is it car, Rex? Is it car? Hello guys, I shit can plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Well, today is a really really damn good day, so why not record the video outside? That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Today's video is a remake of the video How to Overclock RAM in 2019, but this time How to Overclock RAM in 2020, obviously. Well, this video will contain an introduction of how RAM works, the history of DDR RAM and how RAM works, single channel, dual channel and etc. And after that I'll be giving you the overclocking tips. So if you don't want to see the, the introduction of the how to RAM, how the RAM works and blah blah blah, go to the, um, to the description and timestamps will be there. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And see you in the tips box. RAM means random access memory and DDR means double data rate. So DDR, for example DDR4-3200 will actually have a true frequency of 1600 MHz. But since it transfers data on both rising and falling edges of the clock signal, having two signals for clock cycle, it is considered 3200 MHz. We currently have four generations of DDR RAM. DDR, the first, was released in 2000. In fact, my first PC used DDR 400 MHz. Funny enough, the RAM kit had the same frequency of my CPU, which was an Intel Celeron. Good times. <laughs> DDR2 was released back in 2003, being used in Intel Dual Cores, Core 2 Duos, some Core 2 Quads and some AMD Athlons and Semprons. DDR3 was released in 2007 and many people are still using it in 2020. This happens mostly due to the CPU market stagnation that we had from 2011 to 2017 when Ryzen CPUs were launched. In that time people with the 3rd and the 4th gen Intel CPUs weren't in need of upgrading to the 6th or the 7th, since they knew it was not worth that much since they had to buy a new CPU, motherboard and RAM kit and in the end, they would have another quad-core CPU. LAME! But this was also happening since AMD had nothing to compete in terms of high-performance gaming. DDR4 is the latest DDR we have currently available, and it was released in 2014. Analyzing things properly, DDR to DDR2 took 3 years. DDR2 to DDR3 took 4 years and DDR3 to DDR4 took 7 years and I assume that was also due to CPU market stagnation. As for DDR5 we have already seen some news about samples and from what can be read across the internet it is expected to be released to consumers in 2021 or 2022. Still in the RAM section I want to clarify a thing which is single channel versus multi channel. How exactly does that work after all? Simplifying things, single channel means that RAM is using one channel to connect with the CPU, while dual channel will use two channels to connect with the CPU, having double the bandwidth. The same applies to quad channel, which uses four channels and has four times the bandwidth, and octa channel, which uses eight channels, having eight times the bandwidth. No need to say that you need a supported motherboard and CPU in order to run them. For example, having 4 RAMs on an i7-9700K or a Ryzen 7 3700X won't make it quad channel since the CPUs and motherboards won't support it. For example, with 4 RAMs on these systems, you'll still be using dual channel, but with 2 RAM sticks per channel. Another point that I can't stop stressing is RAM kits are all different. This point applies to GPUs and CPUs also, this of course due to the chip binning. For example, you can buy 10 RAM kits with the same reference 
and it is almost certain that all of the RAM kits will have different limits in terms of frequency and latency. But there is another thing that may be limiting your RAM overclocking and that thing is the CPU IMC, Integrated Memory Controller. This same controller reads and writes into memory and it doesn't matter that you have a 5000 MHz RAM kit because if the CPU IMC is not ready for such frequency you won't be reaching it. For example, Ryzen IMCs can get really high RAM frequencies, but the Infinity Fabric can't hold over 3800 MHz unless using really high voltages. That is why in the 3rd gen Ryzen's the memory controller will decouple and run in one half mode in order to run frequencies above that, actually bringing a performance loss. To know more about that you can consult this video with link in the description. As for Intel CPUs, they can usually run way higher frequencies without having to decouple a single thing. This due to its different architecture. But even on Intel CPUs, high frequencies aren't guaranteed to work in all systems. We also have the fact that we have only three RAM chips manufacturers. They are Samsung, Hynix and Micron. That means that any RAM kit you buy, being it JSkill, Crucial, Kingston, Kings <laughs> Kingston or any other, will have one of these three chip manufacturers inside. And there is no way to know what chip you're buying unless you ask the manufacturer or unless they are pretty obvious like 3200 MHz CL14 kits, which will most likely have Samsung b -Dye. That same b is currently the top notch, being the one reaching higher frequencies at the lowest latencies. If you really want to know what kind of chip you have inside your RAMs, you can use a software called Typhoon Burner. It will tell you all you need to know about your RAM. Now that you know the basics, let's go to the tips. So let's go to the first tip. The first tip is XMP, so in case you are really really a newbie to this, just use the XMP. The XMP is the, um, is the factory overclock that comes with your RAMs. All DDR4 RAMs have a base clock of 2133 MHz. So all above that is overclocking. When you buy, for example, a DDR4 3200 MHz RAMs, it is overclocked since the base clock of DDR4 is 2133 MHz. It is just factory overclocked. And to use that, you just need to go into your BIOS and select the XMP. If your computer is not stable, just go and ramp up a bit the voltage of the DDR RAM. So the XMP profile usual, usually takes it to 1.35. So just go and up the voltage a bit to 1.38 or 1.4 volts. The second tip is about voltages. So first of all, like I said before, DDR voltage, so RAM voltage. If you are not stable and if you want or if you want to overclock, the first thing you have to do is to raise the voltage a bit. So instead of using 1.35 or 1.2, which are the stock voltages for, for several XMP profiles, for example, 1.2 usually is for up to uh, 2666 MHz and over that the, the usual voltage is 1.35 volts. So just up the voltage a bit to let's say 1.4 volts or if you want a bit, a bit more aggressive overclock just go up to 1.45 volts. That should do it. In case you use a Ryzen CPU don't forget you also need to tinker a bit the, the CPU NB voltage, in this case the SOC voltage. Just need to tinker it a bit, try to, to maintain it uh, in between 1 volt and 1.1 volt, 1.15 at most. Uh, after 1.2 volts due to the motherboard offset, you may, you may um, fry your chip, so yeah, I don't advise it. From 1 volt to 1.15 volts, okay? Well, the third one is frequencies. So, frequencies first. This is just an opinion, of course. Frequencies first. If you want to do an overclock, just don't mess with your timings at all, at first first go and up the, the frequency the most you can. So imagine if you have a 3200 MHz CL16 RAM, okay, go and up the frequency to let's say 3400 with the same timing. So CL16, 16, whatever, whatever your RAM is 
or whatever your your RAM has for timings, keep it and raise the, the frequency, 3400 MHz. Test it. If it is in fact stable, go up a bit more, 3466 MHz. If it is, sta if it is stable, go up a bit more and yeah, that is the scaling. The fourth one is timings. Since you raised your, your frequency before, you found the, the frequency you wanted, now it is time to decrease the timings. So lower timings mean better performance, not the contrary. So the frequency you want the max frequency you can, while the timings you want the less, um, the less you can. So imagine if it is CL16, you can try CL15 or CL14, lower timings will give you better performance. First of all, mess with the main timing, so you don't need to mess with the, sub with the sub timings in first hand, mess with the timings. Decrease them one by one and test them after, yeah, th this, is, this, is pretty, this is pretty time consuming. It is not hard, but it is, time, it is time consuming. It consumes a lot of hours to achieve a perfectly stable overclock, so decrease one number, test it. Decrease another number, test it, and so on uh, till you get the, um, the lowest stable timings you can get at that frequency, okay? I hope I'm making myself pretty understandable, yeah. And well, now I want to record, but I have, I have really, really too much sound from everywhere. So from, from one side there are people with cutting things with, with machines from the other side there are there are people cutting trees this is just insane and well sub timings like the main timings have some kind of rules for example uh, this value can't be less than this value plus this value but most of the times I ignore the rules thank god so <laughs> well I shouldn't be saying this but in, in a matter of fact, I do ignore the rules, I don't care about those rules, I just decrease the timings the most I can, and well, the results are there, the results are fine, the, the RAM is stable, so I, I just don't really care much about that. But, if you really want the max you can get out of your RAM, just go to the, to the internet and there are several articles explaining you what to do in what part, so... This timing can't be higher than the sum of those two, that timing can't be lower than the sum of those two, and blah 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 blah. Like I, I said before, I shouldn't be saying this, but it is funny, and the results are there. The last part is the stability test. So the stability test. For my stability test, which is usually works every time, uh, that I can remember of at least, um, is to use the Ryzen DRAM calculator, you can use it, for example, to, uh, to also know um, the base, at least the base for your overclocking, you select the, the type of chip you have inside your RAMs, for example, Hynix, Micron, Samsung, you select the type of chip, uh, the, chip the type of chip you have inside your RAM, um, your RAM kit, and after that, you just have the base timings and you can decrease them or or at least uh, increase them if you need to because the the RAM may not may not always be those timings may not always be accurate so increase or decrease from those base timings okay but what I meant is download the Ryzen DRAM calculator to use the inside memory test so use the memory test 86 inside um, that same Ryzen calculator and test with the mem test option enabled test the RAMs let the cycles go from the beginning to the end and if you have zero errors then your RAM is stable and are ready for example for increase uh, frequency or decrease timings okay well guys I did the best I could I'm no expert but I once again I did the best I could to help you if you have any doubts go to the comment section leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try to answer you as fast as I can and as best as possible also, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.